And welcome to a very special Triple Crown edition of Lenny's Place, presented by my good friends at Hillendale Stallions. I wish one thing for every racing fan, that somewhere, somehow, each one of you can enjoy the kind of moment that those of us fortunate enough to be at Belmont Park June 6th experienced. It was a walk-off World Series home run, a Stanley Cup Game 7 winning goal in overtime, a 90-yard Hail Mary touchdown pass to win a Super Bowl, and a heavyweight championship knockout all rolled into one. For this magical period of time, we in horse racing are the equal of any other sport. Because sport at its greatest is showcasing a magnificent athlete who moves like poetry, confounds the opposition, and thrills the fans. An American pharaoh, he's done all of that. And he's been that in all of his last seven races, spanning all the way back to last September. No wonder trainer Bob Baffert was inconsolable when he had to scratch American Pharaoh from the Breeders' Cup last fall. He knew what kind of horse he had, and no doubt feared the injury would rob some of that brilliance and rob the racing world from seeing what this horse could become. And what a training job then by Baffert to bring this horse back as good as new this spring and guide him along through the Triple Crown. The 90,000 of us that were at Belmont that day, well, that number, it'll probably grow to a million when American Pharaoh's story is told and retold because it was just that great. You ever see those photos when World War II ended and people streamed into the streets hugging one another in joy? That was what Belmont Park was like. And I'm sure that scene was repeated in many thousands of other ways all across the continent. This celebration of the end of 37 frustrating years without a Triple Crown could never be the same if, as many misguided individuals argued, racing had changed the rules of the Triple Crown series. If we had dumbed it down, made it easier, spread the three races out over months, or made horses ineligible that didn't race in all three. The celebration of the end of 37 frustrating years without a triple crown could never have been the same if, as many misguided individuals argued, racing had changed the triple crown series, dumbed it down, made it easier, spread out the three races over months, or made ineligible horses that didn't run in the first two legs. This is what makes American Pharaoh's Triple Crown so special. He proved he is the equal of the greats that came before him. And for the Sour Grapes owner from a year ago, last year to this year, well, that's the difference between a good horse and a great horse. Speaking of great performances, viewers who have watched these shows over the past six years, first and they're off and now Lenny's place. No, I'm a fanatic about the horse AP Indy. To see Honor Code, AP Indy's last great horse, run away from the Met Mile field on Belmont Day was a very emotional experience for me. Honor Code ran past horses that had won the Breeders' Cup Classic, the Belmont Stakes, the Vosburgh, the Cigar Mile, the Jim Dandy, and the Jockey Club Gold Cup like they were standing still. He could not have been any more impressive. And he could not have made his sire any more proud. And oh yeah, he grabbed my jacket at the barn the day before the race and wasn't much interested in letting me go. So congratulations to trainer Shug McGahee and also to Des Ryan over at Del Ridge Farm for breeding such a magnificent racehorse. Joining us now is the man of the hour, the breeder and owner of American Pharaoh, Ahmed Zayat. 
Good morning, Lenny. Happy to be here. It's an honor for me to be in your show. I love your show, and it's, uh, it's always fun to be with you. Well, I know you've had many honors bestowed on you these past couple of months, but uh, being the first two-time guest on Lenny's Place, I, I'm guessing that has to rank right at the top, right? It's up there. It's up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the decision that you and, and trainer Bob Baffert have made to share American Pharoah with the public. Um, he, he, he's not just such a great racehorse, he's really a one-of-a-kind horse as far as personality goes, yes? He is a sweetheart. He's a horse that you want to take home with you, literally, and keep in your backyard, and it's like a house pet. He is so kind, so genuine, so intelligent, so loving. I can't say enough, he really loves people. It's very funny because he could get scared from the noise, but yet he loves people. So it's just it's his personality. He is really intelligent. I mean, he takes to the crowd and loves it. And to be honest with you, I'm a horse uh, fan. I love, you know, superstars. I love stars. It's just it's, you know, you, you watch them, you admire them. And when we finally got one in our stable, I honestly made a conscious decision that because of who he is we can share him with everybody and bob have been very gracious and jim and they're you know i'm not there 24 7 but the barn boys are his groom eduardo uh georgio um jim and they have been unbelievably gracious opening the barn for everybody to come and pet him take pictures be next to him and just you know celebrate this uh newborn uh, superstar that uh, we all wanted for our sports and love him. But his personality, if he wasn't a per, you know a star, you would fall in love with him because he is so kind. But you can see his brightness in his eye and how intelligent he is. Um, and he's just a beautiful horse. We've been on a, on a high for more than a week now since since the Belmont Stakes and the Triple Crown. I, I think the whole sport has been on a high. What, what has it been like for you and your family uh, now that a week has passed? Uh, you must still be floating on air, I'm going to guess. Yes, I am. It is an unbelievable uh, sense of gratification, satisfaction, elation, proud humbleness. I mean, you can have this rainbow of feelings. It's just not a week. It has been an, an, leading to the derby, the week leading to the derby, the excitement of what could happen, seeing him thriving, the way he breathed before the derby, speaking to the media and kind of um, proud of your own baby and your own born creation, so to speak. It's, you know, he's a Zayad blood from A to Z in terms of his homebred. So, I mean, we know the whole family, the mommy, the daddy, the whole thing. So watching him grow um, to what we think he would be, uh, the derby, through the Preakness, then the Belmont, then doing the unthinkable and winning the triple crown and what will stick in my mind, the roar of the crowd, the standing ovation, the crying, the tears that people, you know, uh, you wouldn't think they would react this way, but I understand that people in the horse business would be um, excited and elated and wanting to see something that haven't been in a very long time. But what is unbelievable flooring me is the, other mainstream public media. I've heard from people as far as Australia and the Middle East, South Africa, Egypt. People I haven't talked to them since I've been, you know, 30 years ago. High, you know, not only high school, like honestly, like primary school, but the main folks in the street. I mean, we walk in Manhattan and people... Go, Pharaoh, go. Like, crazy. Like, people, like I, I, like, I would never, you know, and every kind of, you know, New York is the melting point. Chinese, Japanese, um, uh, Arabs, um, Jews. I, I hate to label anybody, but I'm, t I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. Like, I, I went in a cab, and, you know, and the guy would not take a fare from me. He said, no, you give us something special. Um, you know, Everything is almost come out of happiness. Like, you know, Justin walks in uh, with his sister in Starbucks and people start clapping. Like, I mean, where would you have seen that? Like, it's insanity. Ahmed, tell us about uh, his sister, who you own. His sister uh, boards at, at Lane's End. She is a beauty. 
Um, she is a full sister, um, and we have a lot of hope for her. But just to have the whole family um, is kind of blessing. Hopefully that uh, gene pool uh, will uh, translate. It's never a guarantee, but it's just you know to have her as a foundation and to keep uh, 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 you know the legacy of Pioneer of the Nile, Empire Maker, the Sapiano line is something that any breeder, particularly in the yeah. stable, will be dreaming of. Are, are you uh, are you pouring over your your contract to, to find a loophole to, to keep him racing next year? Tom Magna, who flew from Australia to come for the race, and Paul Shanahan, the whole Irish contingency, that they um, send us emails and talk to us that you know this is the best day in our life. These are the people who won everything in Europe, who have Galileo, and to feel so connected and to feel that this is something special. Um, they look at him, I mean, it's the most gorgeous horse they've seen. I mean, I mean, they don't need to tell me that. They already bought his breeding rights. And But f f to have this kind of, um, you know, feeling from such un su superb horsemen yeah. who have been in the game, you know, decade after decade and produced the best that uh, money and talent can buy, telling you how excited about this guy I'm, I'm i'm told right now at ashford because i don't think they have a policy of allowing fans to come and see uh stallions that they are changing the whole protocol uh. and building and now it's going to start to do a lot of stuff so um everybody is very um aware of the um instant um celebrity of american pharaoh and they're going to try to accommodate him so saying that, I'm just telling you about their demeanor, their attitude, how they've been with us. But um, in my heart of heart, if anybody would want to continue racing at four, it would be them. Obviously, it's a, a business decision. Um, I don't influence that decision um, as much as I would. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. very, um, um, very realistic. Uh, I've sold the breeding rights. Yes, I'm staying in the horse. I always do. But um, it's a huge decision, and uh, let's see what will happen. But if anybody would race at four, it would be them. But they will have to have this discussion as time progresses. We'll see how he's doing. We'll see how he's racing. We'll see if he's continuing to strive. And I'm sure if he keeps striving, it would be very hard for all of us yeah. uh, to take... Uh, only, only commercial decision. Let's put it this way. It yeah. would be very hard, in my opinion. Ahmed, let me let me say. I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to raise the expectation here yeah. because it's not fair. But yeah. I mean, I, you know, as as I am always am, I'm very candid with you. So <laughs> I'm telling you as is. Yes. And and let me say, Ahmed, in wrapping up, I know you've got bigger names on the line, but from a personal standpoint. And also from the standpoint of the public and the media and everybody else, I know I speak for everybody, to thank you for the graciousness that you have shown, uh, for your whole team that has shown. And uh, we just couldn't ask for a better horse, but also for connections that have been so accommodating and uh, letting the public share in him as much as is possible. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, Nach is all the way down the road for you. My pleasure. It's, uh, thank you for saying that. It's very nice of you. It's our duty. As I told you, we're taking it seriously. And let, let all of us continue enjoying him. His stays healthy. And God willing, the celebration shall continue. Thank you. We want to thank Ahmed Zayed for joining us. He has a lot of demands on his time, so we particularly uh, are fortunate to have such a gracious man as he join us again. We want to thank our viewers. We want to thank our great friends over at Hillendale Stallions. What a thrill this has been for the entire sport of horse racing. We hope to be able to keep it up moving forward. We'll be back with you in another two weeks with the next edition of Lenny's Place. Bye-bye, everybody.